Hey everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Apple Watch 6 and the blood oxygen sensor that's been across the headlines as of late. And as a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist and intensivist, I use pulse oximetry technology almost every single day on all of my patients for various things from big general anesthetics to monitoring COVID patients in the ICU and how they're responding to oxygen therapy. But what really has me concerned is the term blood oxygen for a device that's essentially a pulse oximeter. Now in the hospital, we're used to seeing these things. Typically, these pulse oximeters are affixed to the fingertip and they provide transmittance pulse oximetry, which basically means that when they are properly affixed to the fingertip, the light source on one side is transmitting various wavelengths of light through the tissue and photodiodes on the opposite side are picking up how much light was transmitted at various frequencies. So 660 nanometers and 940 nanometers are the two big ones that we tend to look at that correspond to the visible red spectrum and the infrared spectrum. Now, you can buy these uh, in CVS, at Amazon, anything like that, these battery-powered equivalents, and they tell us more or less the same thing. Now, that light transmittance has been calibrated to represent a oxygen saturation of your hemoglobin, and that's what that Apple Watch is telling us. In this case, what we have is a light source and photodiodes that are capturing the light that's reflected back. So this is reflectance pulse oximetry. There's data out there that shows that this is not quite as good as transmittance pulse oximetry, but I'll let Apple have that one because I don't know the actual data and validation studies they've used for their device. But what's key is when you actually look at this blood oxygen sensor, it's giving you a saturation. It's giving you a percentage. It doesn't tell you anything about your actual oxygen content. And that's where I have a problem as a physician who works with these devices, because for example, the equation for arterial oxygen content is as follows. 1.34 times your hemoglobin saturation times your pulse oximetry saturation of hemoglobin. And that's given as a decimal. So if you're satting 98%, that's written as 0.98. If you're satting 100%, that's 1.00, so on and so forth. That is the big term. That's the big contributor to your overall oxygen content. The second term is much, much more minor because it's multiplied by 0 0.003, but it's your PaO2. How much arterial oxygen do you have dissolved in your blood? Now, this is a much more minor contribution, so we don't really care about it in most patients. But your saturation, what does this tell you, this equation? Your saturation has to be taken in the context of your hemoglobin concentration. You can have a hemoglobin of three and still sat 98%. But your overall oxygen content is pitiful. It's You're profoundly anemic. You're probably going to have symptoms in that situation. But you feel reassured. You feel like you know, your, your blood oxygen sensor is telling you your SATs are 95%, 98%, uh, but your hemoglobin is 6 And the classic time that I get worried about this is in older patients who have had chronic GI bleeds. It's one of the most common causes of anemia in the elderly. Patients who've been losing a little bit of blood, they may not even see it. They may not actually have visible bleeding um, when they're wiping themselves or in the toilet or anything like that, but they will slowly have a hemoglobin drop. And if you couple that with malnutrition, that's just gonna become more of an issue. But if they check their Apple Watch, oh, you know, my blood oxygen sensor is saying I have 98%. And I feel like people have this intuitive idea that hemoglobin, oxygen, all these things are kind of tied together and they feel falsely reassured. So compared to the single lead EKG that Apple introduced in a previous generation Apple Watch, where they give you a probability, you may have AFib or your heart rate is a little on the fast side. This is a little less clear cut. This is just telling you a hemoglobin oxygen saturation, which is not as sexy to write on an app or on the side of an Apple Watch box compared to blood oxygen sensor but we have to understand what's actually being measured. And that's my only point. I'm not someone who's averse to biosensors. Trust me, as a big nerd, especially an Apple nerd, I'm super ecstatic and happy that Apple and other big companies are starting to integrate biosensors into their wearable technology. I can't wait for the day of contact lenses. Google did this, contact lenses that measure glucose and eyeglasses that tell you all sorts of things and the future generation of watches and phones and all that. I'm excited about all of that. My only thing is I really want people to understand what's actually being measured and the pitfalls of those measurements so they can make educated decisions about their health. So if you're seeing bleeding, signs of bleeding in the bathroom or whatever, coughing up blood, blood, you know, tinged sputum, um, 
you should probably go see your primary care physician or go to the ER, regardless of what your Apple Watch is telling you. Now, I know some cardiologists who actually had patients coming in because their watches prompted them that they may have AFib. And that's the beauty of this. That's why this technology is amazing, because people are able to get early diagnosis and treatment that would otherwise present later in the disease course. But I feel like in this case, we have the opposite issue. We may have falsely reassured patients, and then they present late when they actually have symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, headaches, fatigue, these kinds of things related to profound anemia because they have a reassuring blood oxygen number on their Apple Watch. So again, I'm a fan of all these things. Don't, don't get me wrong, but people need to understand what's actually being measured. And in this case, that blood oxygen number is really your hemoglobin oxygen saturation. How saturated is the hemoglobin that you have with oxygen? You can have a very low hemoglobin, but have a really good oxygen saturation. And based on the equation from earlier, you can see why it's important to consider your saturation in the context of your hemoglobin concentration. So if you all have any questions, comments, or just thoughts about this topic, drop me a comment below with questions, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.